Um, thanks a lot uh, for joining everyone. Uh, my name is Guillaume Vassal, uh, and along with Roger Nelson, uh, I'll be one of the two main speakers today. Uh, so for those who don't know me, I'm the Director of Engineering for the Shadgrid product family, uh, including RV. Uh, my background is in computer engineering, uh, mostly in rendering and cloud services development. I've been with Autodesk for over 10 years now, uh, and I joined the Shadgood team uh, right at acquisition uh, as a DevOps engineer, uh, where I led the infrastructure team through its cloud transition. For the last couple of years, I've been building and leading multiple engineering teams. Uh, I'm also part of the ASWF Open Review uh, Initiative Technical Steering Committee. Roger. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, as Guillaume said, uh, I'm Roger Nelson. Uh, I'm a senior developer working on the ShotGrid review team, uh, which includes uh, both RV, open RV, and everything else that's uh, related to reviews. I've been working on ShotGrid for the last uh, six years or so, but I've been at Autodesk for 18 years uh, total, with most of that time working on Flame prior to working on ShotGrid. Uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, in addition to being on the technical steering committee for OpenRV, I'm also part of the TSC for Open Timeline IO, uh, which is another ASWF project that we use quite a bit on the review team. Uh, this presentation will also feature some community demos uh, featuring two guest speakers, uh, Chris Vieno from Movie Lab uh, and Kotalengo Lian from uh, Sony Picture uh, Imageworks. Uh, so here, our here's our agenda for today's virtual town hall. Uh, we will start by quickly covering what is OpenRV, uh, how it came to be, and uh, we will share some of the motivations behind the decision to open source RV and the approach we took to achieve that goal. Uh, we will then cover the progress that was made uh, since OpenRV launch uh, by underlining the impacts of the launch, uh, as well as the improvement that, uh, that were released. We will also share some of the experiments from the community that would have been impossible without uh, open sourcing RV. We will close by sharing some of the initiatives that the open RV TSCs is currently leading that could have an impact outside of RV. Uh, then we will have a period of question at the end of the presentation. So please, like Emily said, uh, use the Q&A feature or the chat uh, to queue question, and then we will cover that in the end. Let's start this town hall with a little bit of history around RV and open RV. RV is a high performance image and sequence playback tool. It offers accurate color representation, large file support as open EXR, guaranteed playback rate at high resolution, as well as local media access. It's mostly used in post prediction dailies for review and approval workflows uh, with supervisors and executives where they can review progress and take notes and context of the shot that's being reviewed. Its plugin architecture and powerful configurable graph engine allows studios to evolve and adapt the tools to their pipeline. RV was originally sold as a standalone product, but is now available at no additional cost through a ShotGrid subscription, and more recently available at no cost in an open source version. RV history started at Tweak Software, which was founded by Jim Arwian and Seth Rosenthal in 2007. Using the vast experience they gathered at ILM, they created RV with a goal of making it a customizable, tightly integrated to pipelines review tool. From the beginning, RV was built with open source in mind. RV architecture allows for customization and extensibility through its plugin architecture. That approach greatly simplified the work required to open source RV. Soon after its acquisition by Autodesk in 2015, the possibility of opening RV has been discussed multiple times, both internally and externally. Studios wanted Autodesk to open source so they could own their destiny and evolve RV even more easily. Autodesk was interested in open sourcing because RV is a complex and heavy software to support. But every time it was discussed, uh, some pieces were missing to make it a compelling story. It took the creation of the Academy Software Foundation and the Open Review Initiative to move things forward. The Open Review Initiative mission aligned perfectly with what Autodesk had in mind for RV's future. Uh, so at this point, Autodesk was ready and the community was ready. Uh, ASWF was the right home for RV and the timing with the Open Review Initiative being created uh, was perfect. 
Open RV finally Saturday on January 18, 2022. The decision to open source made a lot of sense for both Autodesk and the community. Open sourcing RV allows to leverage the community to accelerate product feature development. Once open sourced, it becomes easier to establish priorities with customers and to partner on the materialization of the features and improvement they need. Open source is one of Autodesk's key philosophy at Autodesk. We strongly believe that promoting and developing open standard will help accelerate the community design and make capabilities. The strategy on which we executed to open source RV was simple. In the first phase, we would be removing any blockers preventing us from open sourcing RV. That meant removing proprietary codecs, video outputs, as well as the shotgun integration as it contained Autodesk priority code. On the second phase, we would work on reintegrating blockers removed in phase one with the intent of bringing the open source and the commercial version as close as possible to each other. In phase two, we would also heavily invest in creating that new collaboration with the community, leading the evolution of open RV. It's important to underline that making RV open source is not the end of the road for Autodesk, and Autodesk is committing to maintaining and contributing to both flavor of RV. Let's have a closer look at open RV's launch and the impact it had on both Autodesk and the community. Uh, phase one started in September 2022 uh, and was computed by January 2022, allowing us to release OpenRV on January 18. Overall, phase one was relatively straightforward. In a lot of ways, RV was the perfect product to open source. Uh, the code base was well structured. Uh, the plugin architecture meant that the code was already mostly componentized and isolated. Uh, it was not without challenges, however. A lot of the work done during phase one was non-functional and didn't bring a lot of value to the community. Uh, the work was split into two big categories, uh, both functional work and open sourcing work. The most technically challenging part was probably modernizing the build system uh, that was over 10 years old. It took about four months for us to, uh, to our development team to open source RV uh, and revamping the build system was probably half of that. Another non-negligible part of the work that was done was non-technical. The legal implications of such a project are not to be underestimated. Open sourcing a commercial product and donating it to an external organization brings a lot of constraint, way more than we are used to when open sourcing components as part of the Autodesk ecosystem. That additional re requirement of aligning Autodesk and ASWF legal expectation caused us some headache, especially at the end of the project. Before moving further, I want to take a minute to discuss some key learnings that we did in the process of open sourcing RV. Uh, these learnings were already discussed in depth at OpenRV ASWF Open Source Days back in January, so I won't go into as much details today, uh, and I invite you to dig that recording if you're interested in learning more. Uh, the, the first learning I wanted to bring back is uh, that investing in product foundation pays off. Uh, having an efficient, flexible, automated build system allowed us to meaningfully increase our velocity. Uh, when undertaking such a project, don't hesitate to straighten your application core. It's going to pay off. The second learning uh, was that open sourcing early, even if the project is not completely complete, uh, is a good thing. It forces rootless prioritization of the things to open source and allowed us to release the first version of OpenRV earlier than we expected. Also, getting your project in front of the community helps inform the prioritization of the remaining steps. For OpenRV, uh, opening the code earlier, even earlier to a subset of adopters would have been beneficial and would have allowed us to catch more problems that we found last minute. The last learning I wanted to share today uh, is that when working on such a project with a fixed deadline, it's very important to be flexible. Like for any development work, uh, you will hit speed bumps when opening, uh, when open sourcing a project. The foundational work that in the prioritization that we did uh, gave us the flexibility to be inventive and reactive when we had some issues late in the process. Uh, an example of that flexibility is that there are many ways we extracted non-open source friendly component from the open RV code base. 
Sometimes the approach we use uh, to fetch dependencies through CMake. In other occasion, we leverage GitHub submodules or replace the library with another that was open source friendly. These were all valid solutions and the right solution to choose was depending on the context, not always the same. That flexibility would not have been possible without our investments in having it flexible and modern build system in the first place. Overall, the release was where I received and had an immediate impact. Uh, oh, in the last six months, over 600 unique visitors and more than 100 unique contributors. More than 100 pull requests have been submitted and around 60 issues were open. Of these issues, 49 issues were closed. Noticeable community contribution includes support for additional Linux distributions such as Rail9, Fedora, Gen2, and Arch as well as bug fixes for OpenAXR and memory leaks and new core libraries. It's worth noting that the impact of OpenRV went well beyond OpenRV itself. With the perennity of RV guaranteed now that the code is in the ends of the community, we notice more activity on the commercial version of RV. New releases are being adopted more rapidly, and we've seen the level of engagement with RV customers significantly increase. We also seen the community run different type of experiment with RV, updating the scans, building proof of concept for their studios. Let's have a look at some of these projects. First demo is from Chris Viano, uh, who worked on a proof of concept, leveraging OpenRV to test some ideas from the Movie Labs 23 vision. Chris, you're up. Hey everybody, can you uh, hear me and see me? Yep, perfect. Okay, so we're we're going to be uh, presenting this on Sunday at uh, the Academy Software Foundation uh, Open Source Days. Um, but for those of you that uh, don't know, the Movie Labs is a uh, is a think tank organization that's uh, 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 owned and operated by the studios, uh, the major motion picture studios, and they have a twenty three division for production, which involves ten principles on how uh, content or movie and television production will be done, hopefully before 2030, but the idea is to have a, a vision for there. Um, and, and one of the things that we've been doing this year is trying to go you know, from principles to practice, and we've been building out uh, various proof of concepts that try to you know, take existing workflows and imagine them uh, in that 2030 uh, window. So uh, what we see, you know, what we see here is a, uh, uh, a, a architectural diagram of an editorial turnover where we wanted to imagine um, instead of you know moving media around, it's a big part of the 2030 vision. We wanted to be able to say propagating, you know, a, a, a review is just a publish function. Second is we're talking about a uh, instead of having file paths, we have um, items that are referenced in this case by an ID. And in this, and the other thing that we did in this workflow is we we rendered directly to the cloud. So what we'll demonstrate on Sunday is, you know, a rendering directly to a cloud from Premiere, could come from other things. It's stored in a, a shared cloud storage system with a resolution service. We paired up uh, Open Asset I/O with uh, Open Timeline I/O and Open RV to be able to create this demo. So again, you know, we wouldn't have been able to do it um, uh, without this great project. Um, we added in, and you'll see in the demonstration, we added in a, um, a login, a, a, an ability to authenticate. Just it's an example of an authentication within Open uh, Open RV to be able to do this review in a secure manner. Um, and we were able to plug in Open Asset IO and do some work with Open Timeline IO to be able to create this uh, workflow. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone. You know, Roger uh, specifically working with uh, Matt Daw. Uh, who's again, both of us are ex, ex auditors, so we're very happy to be able to work on this project. Um, and we were able to really quickly uh, prove out some principles, put that into practice, uh, and test out many of the principles and learn a lot about how, uh, you know, building something like this uh, has challenges and communicate that to the various stakeholders. So you can go to the next slide and we'll just give you a sneak peek on, 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 on what we're doing. But again, you know, we we published this. We we wrote all of the the media to um, to uh, you know a bunch of MP4s. Created it in uh, an OTI. I, I think you have to hit play. Uh, maybe if you, yeah, there we go. Okay. So what we added? That's the part where we we were able. We added this Movie Labs 
um, uh, login, it logs into a portal. Again, you know, we're we're trying to show um, that when we do these workflows, if everything's on the cloud, where we want to be able to authenticate. So in this case, you know, we we authenticated with a given user. You want to be able to show things like multi-factor authentication. What we'll show on Sunday is a separate uh, um, system which allows us to create the policy that the VFX review person they actually have access to be able to review the given um, the given code. So in here, after the login, I get access to this um, to this portal. Again, this could be shock rate in the future or all sorts of different applications. Someone gives me um, uh, access. They you know they change the access policy. Um, oh, uh, seems to be going slow for a second there, but you know it should pick up. Okay, that's where it's playing again. Uh, okay, so they the, now in the, the that review, someone is now given access to review the the um, the the timeline. Uh, oh, did it, did it start over? Okay, no, there it is. Okay, so now we have these two tasks. These then, if I hit the review, that's allowing a, a Open RV to be able to check to see if it has access to open the Open Timeline I/O. Once that's done, it loads the OTIO. The OTIO contains a series of IDs. Those IDs are passed to Open Asset IO. Open Asset IO helps us turn those uh, those IDs into URIs. We then check to see if the person has access to loading those MP4s. The MP4s are streamed uh, over the cloud by you know so that we're not moving the media to do the review. And then I get to use um, uh, you know a uh, the, the the greatness of of OpenRV to be able to review locally. Um, but once you close the session, we can revoke the permissions, and uh, the review is done, and no media has been copied uh, during the 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 workflow. Um, and we we were able to basically control who had access to what. So again, you know, I wanted to thank you know, uh, Roger and Guillaume and others um, and Alain to helping us uh, build this. Well, this is a really great uh, opportunity for us to show some of the principles in, you know, in practice next uh, on this Sunday. Um, and it wouldn't have been possible without uh, having this project. Awesome. Uh, thanks for that, Chris. And uh, Chris will be available at the end uh, in the Q&A section if you have any answer or question. For and I'll also be at the BOF, uh, the BOFs next week as well. So if anyone wants to, uh, to ask us questions live, or I'll bring the we'll bring all the stuff to a demo. Great, thanks a lot, Chris. Uh, our next demo is from uh, Catalan Golian, uh, who with his team at Sony Picture Interactive runs scanning experiments with OpenRV. Uh, Catalan Golian currently providing us with a recording of his experiment, uh, and will also be available at the end for question by Chris. Hello, my name is Catalan Golian. I'm a software director at Sony Pictures and Networks. I would like to show a prototype of movie player that we built with OpenRV with a custom UI. This application uses OpenRV as a playback engine, where we send UI elements in Python controlled in a separate process. This means prototype so can play and scrub media, use simple annotation tools to scribble and erase, write text on the screen, perform printing, redo operations, do simple color corrections, etc. It even has a custom color picker that lets people choose their own colors. This is a prototype of a simple movie player, but what makes it interesting is it's actually two applications running as one. In other words, all the playback and code operations are done by the open RV engine, and all the UI elements are controlled by the external process running in parallel. But by some engineering magic, it is presented as a single application to the user. But why? Why would we take a full fledged application like OpenRV, strip away all its UI, and build something completely new on our own? There are many reasons, but few among them are one, it provides us the ultimate flexibility in building a custom UI on top of OpenRV. For a matrix, this means we can implement the familiar UI that our users expect on top of playback engines such as OpenRV. Number two, bring the best features of OpenRV while not giving up on all the workflow plugins and custom development we have done over the years. Number three, multi process architecture provides a steady playback. In other words, plugin can be very powerful and perform demanding tasks while not affecting the playback performance. Currently, this is an experiment we are taking to see if we can use this approach to build the next generation of the field. We share the details of our progress at the ORI meetings. 
please join to provide feedback or collaborate with us on these efforts. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Katalango. Very interesting demo. Uh, I, I've seen other studios doing similar things with RV, uh, making RV almost unrecognizable to uh, usual RV users' eyes. So I invite you to connect with Katalango if you have uh, similar experiences to share. Um, and again, thanks for your collaboration on this, Katalango. Uh, it's been very fun to collaborate with you on it. Uh, if you're interested in more demo uh, involving OpenRV, I invite you to join us in person at SIGGRAPH uh, for OpenRV Better of Feather, like Chris hinted. Um, we'll have the opportunity to dig into more details in the demo that we're done today. Uh, and we'll also have additional demo from Autodesk and Walt Disney Animation Studios. Uh, WDAS will feature two technologies that are integrated with RV uh, and that they might consider open sourcing in the future. One is a standalone vector raster hybrid animation system, and the other is an implementation of a synchronized review service. Uh, they did a demo of that uh, while back at, uh, uh, at some of the technical uh, steering committee uh, for open uh, review initiative, uh, and uh, we'll have the pleasure to get into this again uh, at the Verbal Fair. Next up, uh, we will cover some of the recent release and upcoming updates uh, for the second phase of OpenRV. Uh, for phase two, our focus is to reintegrate some of those open source blockers uh, back into OpenRV, as well as continue to foster adoption. This is currently being worked on, and we're excited to share both what has already been released and what is next. The strategy for phase two can be broken down into three parts, uh, product foundation work, facilitating consumption, and new features. We will dive deeper into some of these items, but here you have on that slide an overview of how we're progressing in each of these categories. To build a strong foundation, we have been committed to keeping OpenRV up to date. This started by catching up with some more than due work to make OpenRV align with the VFX Reference Platform 2022. Work to align with VFX Reference Platform 2023 is currently underway. We also established modern community engagement best practices and processes around submission of issues and pull requests, improving the collaboration with the community. To modernize the color management capabilities in OpenRV, we are currently upgrading our OCIO integration to OCIO version two. We are also considering other improvements to open RV color management capabilities in the near future. We will soon start working on supporting Apple latest MX chipset, allowing RV to benefit from the impressive Apple hardware capabilities. In addition to all of this, the open RV community will see benefits by having RV consume open RV. Uh, which will be discussed in depth later by Roger in the look ahead section. To facilitate consumption, we have improved on our documentation by migrating it from GitHub to read the docs.io. Not only has this helped with readability, but it is also now easier to maintain. The documentation is hosted with a code, making sure it's kept in sync. Editing the documentation is also easier since it can be edited in GitHub, thus included in code pull requests when it makes sense. If offline access is required, it is easy to download a PDF or EPUB version of the documentation. The next step we plan to take in order to facilitate consumption is to invest in CI CD improvements that would improve the current download and build experience provided by OpenRV. Um, we, we made significant effort to improve uh, and make OpenRV as easy to build as possible. Uh, but despite all our efforts, uh, building RV still requires software development skills uh, and specific knowledge. It remains a non-trivial endeavor. Even if built successfully, further distribution of the binaries built inside studios remains complex. Uh, so the Open RVTS is committing to drive discussion with the ASWF community about binary distribution. Uh, we will also engage actively with ASWF Continuous Integration Working Group uh, to leverage their expertise on community-driven project build management and infrastructure, and we're hoping to have some stuff to announce in the upcoming months. On the feature side, 
uh, we are focusing on adding shut grid integration to OpenRV. Integration of shut grid will have the side effect to enable live review sessions between OpenRV and commercial RV, paving the way into cross product review sessions, as you can see in that demonstration. So here uh, you can see that uh, we are running uh, both versions of RV, uh, open source and commercial uh, side by side. A live review session is started from RV commercial by the presenter. And the link uh, to that session is shared with uh, the open RV user. The presenter can then start a playback session uh, where the timeline uh, notes and annotation are displayed in sync. It's worth noting that live review is still in beta and that it's a service that requires a shut good subscription. Uh, but the interesting thing here is that the demo is a living proof of how uh, the open source and commercial version of RV uh, can coexist and benefit users of both groups, uh, even when leveraging commercial offering. Here is a more encompassing view of the current open RV roadmap with a more detailed look at our short and long-term priorities. I would like to put your focus on the considering section. Uh, th these are all items that uh, we are considering implementing next in open RV, uh, but the prioritization and the order in which we're going to execute is open for discussion and meant to be driven by the community. Uh, so if you would like to have an influence on what is when, what next is going to see the day in open RV, we encourage you to join the open RV TSC to let us know your thoughts. For the last portion of the town hall, uh, let me invite to the virtual stage Roger Nelson, who will talk in more details to some of the other things involving OpenRV we are currently working on. Thanks, Guillaume. Uh, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is that starting with the next commercial release of RV, it will now be built on top of OpenRV. Uh, to do this, we're using OpenRV as a submodule of RV. Uh, and we're adding code on top of that, uh, for example, packages and codecs that have commercially licensed code in them, uh, or we're modifying the code using CMake options. Uh, if you've been following the GitHub activity, uh, you've probably seen me there uh, parameter parameterizing things into CMake variables. Uh, and the point of this is so we can change things like the application name or the copyright dates or whatever the case may be uh, that differ between RV and open RV. Uh, and then we can just um, change it that way so we don't have to maintain two separate forks uh, of RV. Uh, we believe this is good for developers, um, us developers uh, internally, because we have no need to manually sync changes to decide what to take from one version and the other. Uh, and best of all, we don't have any conflicts to resolve. I'm sure those of you that are developers know the pain of trying to maintain two separate uh, code bases as they diverge. Uh, and then you end up with never ending conflicts or commits where you only want to take part of the commit and then not, not the whole thing. Uh, and it just becomes a really big pain to maintain as time goes on. So right from the get go, we wanted to avoid that. So we decided that open RV would be uh, the foundation for RV. We also believe this is good for open RV users. Uh, features and bug fixes can be downloaded as soon as they're available. There's no need for to wait for the next release to come out if it's something you've been waiting for. Uh, and not only that, um, OpenRV users can participate in the development process too if they so wish, uh, because everything is done uh, out in the open in the OpenRV uh, uh, repo. So um, you don't necessarily have to commit code to participate either. Uh, you can participate in the development discussions or give input uh, or anything else you wish to do as well. Uh, we also believe it's good for the commercial RV users because anything that's added into open RV will automatically be inherited by RV. Uh, so anything that's added by the community uh, becomes available to commercial users as well. 
Uh, next up, we have the video output API, which is something that we're working on. Uh, this is being built for adding video output devices into OpenRV as plugins. Uh, similar to other plugin APIs already in OpenRV, uh, users can just create a library with the required methods and drop it into RV's plugin directory. And then OpenRV will automatically load it dynamically at launch, uh, and then it will appear in the video output uh, menu in the UI. Uh, so we have two uh, existing uh, video output devices in RV, Azure and Blackmagic, uh, and we are modifying those to use the plugin API. So everything is using a common interface and we don't have multiple code paths to maintain. Uh, as I was just talking about with RV and OpenRV, uh, we didn't want to have two separate code paths to maintain and bear all the maintenance burden of uh, code diverging. So we're able to avoid that by uh, using this new plugin API with uh, the existing Azure and Blackmagic plugins. Um, but the point of doing this is we want to use this new new uh, output API to create a plugin for NDI support uh, for streaming video over a network. Uh, that's something we're currently working on uh, and it will be added into the uh, OpenRV repo. Uh, but please note that the Azure and Blackmagic still have some commercially licensed code in them, so that will not be immediately available uh, in the OpenRV repo, but the NDI plugin will. Uh, the advantage to doing this is that it will be easier to support other video output devices in the future. We'll have a working example that we can use as a template to add any other uh, devices that we want to do so in the future. Uh, but probably the biggest advantage to doing all this is that we'll have an open API that will allow us to share plugins across applications. So for example, if XStudio supports the same API, it could also load the same plugin and have NDI support. And then we could share the maintenance burden of adding new features and bug fixes between the two applications with only one plugin to support. Next up, we have a, a little video. Uh, it has no audio, so I'll explain uh, what's going on. And thanks to uh, Bernard Leberich for making this video for us. So here you can see the NDI uh, output mode that's uh, available once you have the plugin. Uh, and there's NDA's website. They describe it as a uh, way to stream live uh, video over networks for live uh, review. And there you can see the developer, the SDK developer kit that you can download. Uh, it's pretty simple. It just contains a few headers, a few binaries. The contents uh, are listed there, and that's available to download uh, from the um, website, the New Tech website, who's the manufacturer. Uh, there you can see the code. It's just very simple, two files uh, that conform to the new plugin architecture. And once you have those, you can go into the preference uh, menu in RV and NDI will become available as an output module. So we'll select presentation mode so we can use NDI in presentation mode. And first you'll see it um, playing locally here on a, uh, our, on a laptop with RV installed on it. It's a Mac laptop. Uh, and there you see the clip playing locally. And now we will uh, zoom out and we'll enable presentation mode and start playing it. And you'll be able to see soon there, there's the Mac laptop that it's playing on. And there's the router and it's playing on this Windows machine over here through an ethernet cable. Uh, you can see there's no internet on this machine. It's strictly the local network. And this is the NDI monitor, which is a tool provided by NDI. There we'll select the, the Mac machine and the application RV on it. And there we can see the video being broadcast to the Windows machine uh, from the Mac machine over the network. There it is playing on the Mac uh, in RV. And there's the output on the Windows machine. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was um, an OTIO-based sync review uh, messaging system that we have proposed. 
the idea is to make uh, an application agnostic, so reviews can be synced across any application, desktop or web, that has implemented support for the messaging system. Uh, a lot of work has already been put into thinking about how to best express time by the Open Timeline I.O. team. Uh, so we've tried to leverage that in the messages. Uh, if you're familiar with OTIO, we've used rational time and time range schemas uh, to synchronize time. So whenever we need to sync to a particular point in time in the video, we can use those to accomplish that. Uh, we also know that more and more applications are starting to support OTIO. So we think that using something that a lot of apps are already familiar with will uh, ease the the burden to integrate that into the application. Uh, we're also using paint and text effects for annotations. So we've leveraged the OTIO effect schemas to be able to express those effects. And we're using the spatial coordinate system that is available in OTIO. Specifically, we're using the box and vector, uh, which come from IMATH, um, which is part of uh, the OpenEXR ASWF project. So we're using quite a few existing ASWF uh, technologies in this proposal. Of course, OTIO cannot fully express everything that you need in a synced review. So we've also created some schemas that look like OTIO schemas for things like sessions and participants that are not necessarily related to time or timeline information that OTIO specializes in. Um, so please feel free to check out the ASWF wiki if you're curious about it. Uh, the full uh, spec is published there. Next, we have a diagram that uh, illustrates how this is working. You saw in Guillaume's video earlier, synchronized review between RV and OpenRV, uh, but we can also sync reviews uh, over the web to something like ShotGrid. So you could sync your ShotGrid player with OpenRV or RV using this protocol. Uh, you can also see we have that dashed line to third parties there because it's not uh, currently supported in any third parties, but we would like to extend the invitation to anything that's part of the open review initiative to participate as well. And hopefully the idea is uh, consumers could eventually be using uh, XStudio, ShotGrid, RV, OpenRV, and all be participated in the same sync review session. Uh, we also know that XStudio is already supporting OTIO, so that was another reason uh, that we figured uh, OTIO could be a good basis for some of the messages. I'll hand the uh, floor back to Guillaume for this part. Great. Uh, thanks a lot, Roger. That was, uh, that was great. Um, uh, before we open the floor to question, uh, just a quick reminder that we are always looking for more uh, involvement from the community. Uh, um, among other things, we are particularly interested in collaborating with studios that will be open to open source RV plugins uh, that they may have developed over the years. Um, plugin distribution is something we would like to accelerate next year. Uh, and it will be great uh, if we could parallelize that work with distribution of new plugins. Uh, we are also seeking your input, like uh, Roger said, on the sync review messaging proposal. Uh, the more people from the community we have involved, the more progress we will make on that topic. Uh, and you'll see if you join the Open Review Initiative panel uh, next Monday, but we believe that um, Collaboration, uh, sync review collaboration across uh, across product could be a first good step for the open review initiative to uh, to achieve. Uh, we uh, uh, yeah, finally we are uh, also always looking for community collaboration on features and bug and bug fixes. Uh, and the open RV TSC is prioritizing moving forward the work that is done by the community. We are also open on collaborating the community on some feature requests if the opportunity shows up. So if you have anything that you're missing at your studios or that you would like us to see implementing, um, if you're willing to collaborate, uh, we'll give priority to that in our roadmap. You can reach the TSC in multiple ways, uh, either through the Open Review Initiative or Open RV Monthlies to the open initiative, uh, Slack channels, GitHub discussion, uh, or in person next week at SIGGRAPH at the Open RV Berber Feder, uh, or at any of the uh, open source days that have been being held by the association. Then. And with that, let's move to Q&A.
I'll stop sharing my screen so it's uh, it's more convivial. But um, yeah, we're open for question either on the roadmap, either on what was presented today. Uh, we also have like a, like we said, Kotlango and Chris here. Uh, so uh, again, uh, let me re-extend the, inv the invite uh, for those of you who are around at SIGGRAPH, uh, join one of the session if you uh, see me in the corridor or something uh, don't hesitate to grab me for a discussion uh, let's have coffee or a beer and uh, let's discuss uh, anything you would like to discuss so uh, again thanks a lot for attending uh, i hope you appreciated the content uh, and uh, see you at the next uh, monthly tsc or at segraph person